Dear friends in Christ Jesus, Robert Frost, one of the noted poets of the 20th century, after having penned the poem, Road Not Taken, sends the advanced copy of the poem to his best friend and writer, Edward Thomas. Edward, after having received the letter, read the following lines in the poem. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. He then took the lines of the poem seriously and personally, and made a significant decision to enlist himself in World War I. And the consequence was that he was killed after two years in the Battle of Arras. The decision to choose the road less traveled, that is the narrow road, will eventually cost much, but the result is that it will make all the difference, the difference that is leading to a salvation. In the book of prophet Jeremiah, chapter 21, verse 8, we read, I am setting before you the way of life and the way of death. The way of death is through the wide road which is easy to travel, but that which leads to destruction. The way of life is through the narrow road which is hard, but that leads to life and that which makes all the difference. In today's Gospel, Jesus is confronted with a question. Lord, will only a few be saved? Answering this question, Jesus points the way to the gate and says, It is available to all, but only the determined will enter. Those who make a conscious choice to walk through the gate. The gate, of course, is Jesus, for he says in John chapter 10, verse 7, I am the gate. The world that we live in offers multiple gates to heaven, but there is just the one gate, the narrow one, for the followers of Christ to get to heaven. When we look at the present scenario, the mass media and communication, what is portrayed and discussed is nothing but the moral dimension in a large proportion. It could be some malpractice or corruption or whatever. Therefore, it is noted that what is central to all human activity is the moral and the ethical dimension. The society hangs on the action of the conscience. Therefore, the narrow door in the first instance is the obedience to the voice of the conscience. The conscience is the power of our mind to judge whether what we are intending to do or what we are doing is morally good or bad. That is why Cardinal Newman says, the conscience is the nature's vigor of Christ. It is so important in everyday life that we learn to live by a sensitive, upright and properly formed conscience. A properly formed conscience is the first narrow door that the Lord refers in the Gospel today. But there is a danger that we need to avoid. The danger of choosing to ignore one's conscience when one realizes that the following of it will be inconvenient or costly. Therefore, a union with Christ and our path to salvation will depend on our fidelity to the conscience in all detail. That is the first narrow door. After having formed our conscience, the second narrow door could be our fidelity to the way. That is nothing but our striving. For Jesus says in today's Gospel, strive to enter through the narrow door. If we look for the meaning of the word strive in Greek, we would realize that it means to struggle for a prize. Obviously, it implies a great deal of effort. We cannot win a war or an athletic competition just by being passive. The person has to invest a great energy and effort into winning. But not everyone wins the prize. 
but only a few who strive to enter through the narrow door. This calls to mind the judgment passed on to the church in Laodicea, which we read in the book of Revelation, chapter 3. It reads, I know all your activities, since you are neither cold nor hot, but only lukewarm. I am about to spit you out of my mouth. Well, what does it imply? It implies our fidelity to the way, our striving, not being passive. It's not enough to say, Lord, we ate and drank with you, and you taught in our streets. It's equal in saying that, Lord, we went to the church, we attended mass, put money in the collection plate, etc. It is nothing but seeking cheap grace. Unless it reflects a true commitment, a genuine strive to enter through the narrow gate, which offers us costly grace. Therefore, our prayer shall be today for the grace to form a properly formed conscience and invest a great deal of effort in striving to enter through the narrow gate which will offer us costly grace. May God bless us all.